Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, I am uh, amazed with the glory of creation. I say you all look wonderful this morning. Everybody got an extra hour of sleep on this morning. Oh, oh, isn't that right? Wasn't that great? I'm thinking we should do that every month. We should set our clocks back now. It would be wonderful. And eventually, the sun will come up at 1 a.m. But that's okay, because that's when the day begins anyway. It always been curious to me why the sun doesn't rise at 1 a.m., because that's when you start counting hours of the day. Well, enough foolishness. But I give praise to God for God's great foolishness. Amen? Amen. The Amen. colors of the leaves of the fall, God's invention. God said, for those people on the East Coast that don't have a whole lot going for them, I'm going to color up their leaves. You don't get that in Florida. No, 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 no. And you don't get that in Southern California either. You get that right here on the East Coast, and we get the glory in it. In my opinion, the prize for autumn leaves goes to the trees at the corner of Old Frederick and Up North Road. Have you seen them? Oh, yes. They're just fantastic. Those two trees there, somebody ought to take a picture of them, put them on, on your calendar. They're just wonderful. I got the same kind of display, although not quite as good, out my uh, bedroom window. So I get up in the morning, I see that wonderful display, and I know two things. One, I got a lot of raking. <laughs> and the other is that God loves me. God loves us and provides his beauty for us. And whatever it is we have to do, God's love is going to be with us as we do it. Amen? So God's love be with us this morning as we worship together. God's love be with us as we celebrate the communion of the saints. God's love be with us as we take communion and share the bread which gives us the presence of the Lord to be right here with us today. I want to make an, an invitation to you. We will once again this year uh, have an Advent Bible study. I know Advent's still three uh, Sundays off as we uh, count them down. But we need to prepare for that. So we're we'll using the scriptures of the Advent season, Isaiah, Luke, Matthew, 2 Corinthians, Revelation. We'll gather them together for our study. We're going to offer it on Wednesday evenings at 7. We're going to record it. So if persons can't get here, you can get it by recording. We're going to also offer, we can do it during the day sometime. If there are folks that would be interested in a daytime study of the Advent scriptures, Whoa, we even come to your house and do it for you personally if that's what you like. Because we should all engage in that study of the scripture. There are places where you can indicate your interest on the sign-up sheet um, as you uh, leave the service today. Please do that so we know what kind of interest there is and can make our planning uh, to accommodate everybody. Uh, now, where did she go? Uh, it's okay. Uh, our liturgist for this morning is Bobby Bean. She'll share the rest of the announcements with us. Absolutely. We are thankful for the work that we do in this community. As you know, uh, the thrift shop is open the first and the third Saturdays of each month. And uh, they were able to greet people yesterday. They were able to serve people. And um, they uh, yesterday they made over two hundred dollars in the thrift shop. So your recycled items that you donated, we appreciate people who drop them off, um, and those recycled items were certainly appreciated by the recipients and the people that that purchased them yesterday. On Monday, uh, the uh, United Methodist Women are having their monthly meeting in the Fellowship Hall area. Uh, they remind you to please bring your own lunch and drink, and uh, they hope that you can join them at 1130. You did not need to make a reservation, so if you're available, please uh, plan to join them tomorrow at 1130. Also, uh, next Sunday, is, uh, well, Thursday is Veterans Day. However, next Sunday, we're going to be celebrating Veterans Day here at Trinity. And we uh, would like you to contact as many people as possible and invite them to our service next week so that we might honor the veterans uh, that are not only members of our congregation, but of our community and our families. So please keep that in mind. Also, uh, on the mission and outreach uh, program, 
We, uh, I now have the uh, five families, so probably next week I will be uh, putting out the cards for the families uh, for the angel tree, so be on the lookout for that. But more importantly, next, uh, next Sunday, uh, or Sunday two weeks from now, is uh, an important Sunday because we're going to be assembling all of the items that you have been bringing in for the shoebox ministry. It is next Sunday. Oh, today. Oh, yes, today is the 7th. That's right. So next Sunday we will be uh, assembling those. So when you come in Fellowship Hall, you'll see tables of items so that we can pick up a box and go through and clean and pack that box up for um, the children who will be recipients of that. So we look forward to that. And if there's any additional items that are left, Donna uh, is accepting donations of people who might want to contribute, not only to the shipping, but also to some of the other items that we might need. We extend our welcome to all those who are joining us by our recorded service today. We are happy that you are with us and love that you are, have joined us spiritually in the words and prayers and music of our worship. As you have become acquainted with us in this virtual way, we also invite you to join us in person at our uh, services at 1015 on Sunday mornings. And we are thankful for the people that are able to, to join us on Sunday mornings also. Only God knows what may come out of all of us gathering together. It is time for us to pass the peace to one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. May we pass that peace by waving to everyone and those online. Thank you. And we do all of this because this is the day that the Lord has made. Give thanks to God's holy name. We 
May we offer our silent words of confession to our Heavenly Father. May we together offer a uniform prayer of confession. We come to you this day, O Lord, and worship you as the God of all our mothers and fathers in faith. We remember all of your blessings to us, breathing your own life into our being. You give us the blood of life and the promise of life
us today, standing on holy ground, uh, for one. Uh, we stand on the ground that surrounds the table of the Lord. Indeed, today, we are the table of the Lord, because in each of our hands holds those elements, that bread, which is Jesus, that juice, which is his blood, which communicates, which brings his presence to us. And standing in this holy ground, we then use this occasion, as we do every year, to celebrate the saints. It is in our minds that there are saints who have gone before us, and we know who they are. And when we talk about those who have gone before us, we know that there's a long list of those folks. There are those that extend from St. Francis, amen, St. Thomas, and all those traditional saints who have passed the faith on down to us. And there are those saints in our lives. Uh, St. Mom, right? St. Aunt Gert, St. my favorite school teacher who have helped pass on to us the richness of life. But we use this time, this particular time each year, to name those saints who have departed from our lives here on this earth to their rest and glory. And we would take this moment in our service today to name those names whom you have gathered to our attention that we might light the candle which gives our thanks and praise to God for the lives of those whom we would honor this year. Following the lighting of all those names, there will still be one candle to be lit, and it will stand for um, those whom you may wish to name after we have named those who are already before us. Amen? So let us hear the names and light the candles. John Martin. Millie Hartley. Pat Thorne. Terry G Gibbler. Dennis Delvey Coley. Theodore R. Strickland. Charles Parmahan. Leslie Ward. others whom you may wish to name that come out of your heart. Those who we miss. Sharon? White Waters. I'm sorry? White Waters. White Waters. Any others? Yes, Susan? Leslie Hedger. Leslie Hedger. Leslie Hedger. Dennis Horsman. Dennis began our service with an opening prayer, much like this one. It always seems to me that prayer comes more alive, closer to our hearts, after we have named those who have gone before us, 
and think even in our hearts now of those others whom we hold precious. Let's pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your people in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of Christ. Grant us grace so to follow in your holy saints in all virtuous and godly living that we may come to those unspeakable joys which you have prepared for all who sincerely love you and lovingly serve others in your holy name. Amen. Lord, we do give our hearty thanks for those whom we have named before you and those who dwell in our hearts, those who have been for us saints in our lives, those whose lives we miss now because they are no longer with us here, those who even in these moments cause us some grief, but Lord, those who are now in your keeping, and we thank you for that, that the life you give us is a life that's eternal, and we glory in its life, giving you thanks and praise for their lives, for our life, all devoted to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn is for all the saints. I would invite us to stand and sing these sentences. For all the saints.
And this particular saint, I believe it was Saint Teresa, said that the exercise for our souls is our prayer. When we pray, we are exercising our reaching out from our spirit to the spirit of God. Uh, and it's not that far that we have to reach, is it? The spirit of God is among us. So our prayers this morning take our exercise, our souls, to grow stronger in the belief, in the knowledge that God hears us and God is attuned to our hearts. Let us uh, then offer our prayers. Prayers of thanks, prayers of concern. Um, first, let's collect some prayers of thanks today. Uh, let us give rejoicing uh, for one, that, um, that, that Ray Smith is here with us. This is, <laughs> I'm right on my calendar, this is Ray Smith Day. So you were here, and we're happy to have you here. And Ray just celebrated his 88th birthday on Monday. And, oh yes, and on Monday, All Saints Day, in fact, uh, Ray celebrated his uh, 88th birthday. Strength and glory and praise be yours. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Other thanks that we may wish to give? Oh, come on, come on. That the day is glorious, that life is good, that you're healthy and well, and that all things rose up this morning. It's a different time. But it didn't matter to the universe because the sun still rolled around just like God planned. And we're all part of it. Susan, I'm sorry. You said Oh, okay. <laughs> Our prayers of concern. Bob, you have a few to share with us? Absolutely. The first is a prayer of sympathy for the family of Leslie Ward. Many of you may remember uh, Christina Ward. Christina Ward was the best friend of Marie Balsamo. And, um, and grew up in our church activities here. Well, Christina's mother, Leslie, passed, and we certainly want to offer prayers of sympathy to the Ward family. Also, a joy and a concern is, is that, you know, last week we offered prayers for Matthew, who is the friend of Madison Russell and the Conradi family. He had a surgery, he is home, he is in a great deal of pain, so we ask uh, for prayers of that. He would like to extend his thanks to us and our congregation and to the people that pray for him because uh, the surgery has been a success, but of course he has to go through the healing process. Are there any other prayers of uh, concern or joy? I was speaking with Carolyn Jenkins yesterday, and we prayed last week for her friend Carrie. But Carrie, she said Carrie is doing better. Oh, good. Um, however, now Carrie's mother is in the hospital now, so oh. now we need to pray. I don't know these names. God knows who they are. You know. um, but all I know is that her name is Carrie. So we continue our prayers for uh, Carrie in the hospital with uh, COVID, and for her mom, who is now in the hospital also. Yeah, Susan. Uh, strength and comfort and healing and peace to my sister Vicki Hong. Vicki, yeah. Oh, yes, you better. Keep Vicki in our prayers. Healing and comfort. Others that we may extend our prayers. Amen. Amen. Do keep up. Uh, uh, my brother, uh, uh, Jim, in your prayers. Uh, start with. Uh, um, circulatory issues in, in his life. Uh, and if you would continue to pray for Akaya and for those who uh, care for him as he weakens, uh, his caregivers are um, uh, called on to do more and more for him and um, keep that whole family, Akaya, and those who care for him in your prayers. Amen. So let us pray. Good and gracious God, you are creator. You who designed us to be your creatures. You who designed a world to accommodate us to be your creatures filled with other creatures and all the wonders of nature. You, the God of infinite wonders, whose imagination is always outpacing ours about how good life can be, how splendid life can be, 
as we learn to live by your mercy, by your love, and by your graciousness. We praise you for that, Lord, because you are the wonder edge of our lives. You are among us to say how wonderful life can be. Mm. When earth is fair and all its people one. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, because from time to time, we see that heaven breaking through on earth. Ah, Lord, we, we love to say we see it in the autumn glory. Ah, it's transitory. It passes, but it's there for the moment. And from time to time, Lord, we know that there are moments of heaven on earth. And we pray for their, we give you thanks for their appearing and we pray for their abundance. And that, Lord, if there's any way you can use us to make that heaven appear on earth, you go ahead and do that. Whether we want to or not, you go ahead and do that. Lord, we ask in our praise of you that you make us praiseworthy as well. Shine through us. We have come to you, Lord, for those who are need. Ongoing needs, Lord. Some needs just seem to linger around us. And we pray that you give lingering strength ongoing courage, unending comfort and strength for those who look to you. For Carrie, who still seeks further recovery, and for her mom, now in the hospital as well. For those whom we have named before you, Lord Vicki, needing your comfort and strength as she continues to heal. Ah, for Matthew is he deals with that pain following his surgery. For Jim as they seek to help him with his ails. And for Gaia with all that pain that clouds him every day that you might be there. And be with those who are around them. Give them the strength to be able to be the caregivers they want to be. And to be the bringers of hope. Lord, let us all be caregivers as well. There's much in this world that needs caring for. There are many who look for love. There are billions who wonder if the next day is worth living for. And we pray you help us be a part of the positive answer to that question. Yes, because there is God. Yes, because there is Christ's love. Yes, because there are people who believe in God and live in Christ's love. And it is us. We give our thanks and praise and offer these prayers in the name of Jesus. Oh, and we thank you for Jesus. We pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Find the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you join me in singing God of love and God of power?
Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the heavens saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Amen. Amen. This morning... We Jeremiah will. Sachs, if he would read the New Testament lesson for us today. So let me invite you to stand. Here. Okay. You knew Jeremiah when he was just a little lad. And would come up here and sit, and Jeremiah would have those conversations, which went under the title of Children's Sermon, but it sure was more than that. And Jeremiah is sure more than that now, too. Amen? Amen. We are happy to have Jeremiah here to share with us the Beatitudes. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Jesus called the first disciples, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will be inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Thank you. It is a you know, traditional thing to read the uh, Beatitudes on All Saints Sunday. <laughs> because if there's anything that uh, saints do, it is to be blessed. And if we are to be blessed, it is by these um, beatitudes. They are the blessing characteristics. You know, the traditional story of the saints, you know, is uh, the young lad that came and asked uh, his uh, minister one day, uh, what, are, what, what are the saints? And the minister asked the young fellow, well, who do you think the saints are? Well, he had been coming to this church for years. And, uh, and, and and when he was not listening to the sermon, which was quite frequently, he was studying the windows that were around. And he could see in those windows, because he had asked people about this, the saints who had gone before him. And so he told the preacher, he says, I don't know who the saints are. They're the ones whom the light shines through. Amen? Amen. Good definition. Good definition. But we need to be clear about what's the light that's supposed to shine through us. And fortunately, we have the Beatitudes and the definition of the Beatitudes in the parables of Jesus to help us to understand that. And, 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 and it's always a good question to ask ourselves about our lives. What's the light that shines through us, right? You, you hear about, oh, you know, um, I don't know whether it was saint or not, but Tom Maddy, old number 41 from the Baltimore Colts. Remember him? Mm -hmm. Died this past week. Good Presbyterian 
church member too. I met him at some conferences. Um, and instead of Tom Matty, when he came into a room, um, years after he was this running back and, and substitute quarterback for the Colts, I get too much involved in football, I'm sure. But even after that, when he came into a room, he lit up the room. And I can testify to that because I was in some of those rooms. Because at first I thought, who is this guy? They just won't be quiet and sit down. And so that's Tom Matty. Lighten up a room. What light do you bring into the room? Jesus suggests to us what that light is to be. It wouldn't hurt us to memorize the Beatitudes. So whenever anybody says to you, blessed are the pure in heart, you would respond by saying what? Ah, they shall see God. Yeah. And when someone says to you, blessed are those who mourn, you would say, well, they shall be comforted. Amen. Blessed are those who hunger after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So I tell Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, etc., etc., that. All right? The meek, blessed are, this is the easiest one of all. Everybody gets this one right. It's a given. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. It's an eye for an eye. <laughs> In the best sense of that word. Blessed are those who are merciful. Could we linger over that for just a moment? Well, you got to, because that's what I'm prepared to talk about. <laughs> and we'll study a little bit about what that word might mean. Mercy. In, 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 in Hebrew, it's chesed, which has to do with loving kindness, which has to do with a, a feeling of the heart, a feeling so strong in your heart that connects our life with the life of another, is concerned about the issues in the life of the other, and wants to make a difference in it. Impulse of the heart to care so strong that you do something about it. Right? You create 200 shoe boxes for children in the world. You make extra Thanksgiving dinners to extend to those whom you know will have nothing to eat that day. You spend extra time visiting with a friend whom you know is lonely and needs to have your comfort. Mercy, mercy, mercy. One of the basic words that describes God is that God is merciful, right? Sure, you know that. What's the one psalm we got memorized? Hey, Psalm 23, eh? The Lord is my shepherd, surely goodness and what? Mercy shall follow me. How long? All the days of my life and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord's mercy forever. The psalmist never stopped gave you giving praise to God for his mercy. Why is that? Because the only reason there were psalmists is because of God's mercy. It was God's mercy that freed them from slavery in, Israel, in, in, in Egypt. And God's mercy brought them into a land in which they could live. They knew God as a merciful God because God had freed them from slavery. They knew God as a merciful God of mercy whose mercies never end. Again and again and again it's repeated in the Psalms. And so when Jesus says, I want you to be holy as God is holy, I want you to be perfect as God is perfect, he is saying, I want you to be merciful in the same way that God is merciful. It's written in the law. Deuteronomy 15, Leviticus uh, 20 something, sorry, 21, um, is the law of Jubilee that every seven years, mercy be legislated. Every seven years, everybody's debt is forgiven. Ha <laughs> ha, wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? How many people are still carrying debt? Every seven years, somebody calls me up on my telephone 
and says, David, I have wonderful news for you. Your mortgage has been paid. Whoa. And I give thanks for every seven years. All the land that's been taken to, from people gets returned. Every seven years, all the orchards that have been taken from people to pay debts get Every seven years, every seven times seven years, every slave is set free. It took us 250 years to do that in America. God says do it every seven years. Because God is merciful. Oh, we need to learn the lesson of merciful. What does Jesus mean by merciful? Let me just real quick give you, oh yeah, good. Let us real quick, a quiz. What's a psalm about God's mercy? I'm not a psalm, a parable about God's mercy. It is occurring to me that anytime we get stuck on a word or a concept, we ought to look to a parable, a story that Jesus told or explained to us about what mercy is. Lord, a prodigal son, who's merciful there? Or the pigs who shared their food with yeah, the guy. The father. No, the father, yeah. Because. The son comes home, burdened by his sin, um, stripped of all of his money, made an absolute mess of his life, and what does the father do? Has a party. Has a party for him. Embraces it, puts a new robe on it, reestablishes him, lifts him up, and gives him a party. A wonderful party. Any other parable? Oh, good Samaritan. Oh, yeah. Who's a good, where's the mercy there? Uh, he gave him, uh, he picked him up from the road, get, you know, dressed all the wounds. Talking about to the end, so we can be yeah. um, taken yeah. care of, and said, "I'll pay for all." all the, <laughs> right, right. I'll take care of everything. Whatever needs to be yeah. done. Yeah, because he saw him there, had mercy on him. Yes. Yeah. And then Jesus said, "Who proved to be neighbor?" And the answer is the one who was merciful to him. Ah, another parable about mercy. Oh, how about the parable of the unforgiving servant? Every positive parable has a negative twin. <laughs> and this is a parable about how not to be merciful. You know the story, don't you? There is a man who owned a lot. And he decided he was going to go to his uh, servants to settle up things, and one servant owed him millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. And he went to him and said, pay up. And the man said, I can't pay up. It's too much. And the master said, okay, I'm going to sell you and all your family into slavery. And the man fell down on his knees and he begged and begged and begged, had mercy on him. And lo and behold, the man, the owner, the master says, I forgive you. I forgive you. The story goes on. The servant who had been forgiven goes out and meets another servant, a fellow servant, who owed him 20 bucks from a football gambling day. And he said, then pay up, I need that money right now. And the man said, I can't give you that. I don't have that. And the forgiven servant says to him, what? I'll throw you into prison until you pay me back. That never made sense to me. How are you going to get money in prison to pay him back? Which means you're just going to be in prison for as long as I care to leave you in there. And he does. Ah, but the story doesn't end there. Because his fellow servants, whom I think who also had been forgiven by the master and thought this forgiveness thing is a really neat thing to live. This merciful way of living is a whole lot better than this other, I'll get you for your debt way of living. I love this, they thought. Went and told the master, hey, you know that guy you forgave all that stuff for? He wouldn't forgive another person. And the master calls him back in and says, you sit here. I hear what you've done. Now you pay me back everything. He said, I still get paid. And he throws him into prison. To be tortured, Jesus says. It's a mean thing. To be tortured. Why? Why? Oh, I take a lesson from this too. Somebody calls me up and forgives me my mortgage. Hey, What that means is I should use that $5,000, not that much, that $5,000 a month for the good of others. Pass it on. Oh, it would be a tough lesson to learn. I'd rather buy some new television or something. But no, pass it on to somebody else. You see what it is? Jesus is talking about a kingdom of mercy. And he says, here's how it's going to work. I'm going to be merciful to you, and to you, and to you, and to you, and to you. And I'm going to forgive all your sins. Not only that, but Jesus says, and what we know to start doing is forgiving everybody's debts too. 
I'm going to call the bank and tell them that according to Matthew 18, they need to forgive me my mortgage. I don't think I'll get very far with that. But Jesus thought if we were in obedience to the way he's been merciful to us to be merciful to others, we would create a river of mercy. See, which would flow into an ocean of mercy, which would be an overflow of mercy upon us all. He wanted to create a kingdom of mercy. The kingdom of God, God is merciful, is the kingdom of God's mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Today, we celebrate communion. Jesus identifies himself in this bread. Jesus says, this bread is made. Do you know what that means? Whenever you pray, whenever we pray, be nice to the bread day. Whenever you pray, give us this day our daily bread. We're praying, give us this day our daily Christ, our daily Jesus. That is the bread for us. So we come forward. The bread of mercy is ours. The cup of his compassion is ours. And we are invited to share this that we may be a part, you see, of the creation of a whole new way of life, reorient reality around the divine characteristic of mercy. How merciful can you be? How merciful can I be? Is it enough to start a little stream of mercy that somebody else might drink from and add their mercy to it until it becomes a flowing force? And the meat shall inherit the earth. Let's pray. Gracious God, gracious and merciful God, gracious, kind, and merciful God, we thank you for all of your kindness and mercy to us. We rejoice in this invitation to come and feed upon your mercy that in our lives there will be that which is divine and that which lives forever on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. opportunity today in the midst of our beginning this service of communion to acknowledge our offering to God and to make our offering to God. I know as we come in, we place our offerings in the communion offering plate for the Catonsville Emergency Association and the plate for our church. And we make our offering of cereal and anything else we may have brought. But Lord, we also bring ourselves. We just offer us to be your saints that you may shine through us. And we praise God because God accepts our offering and wishes to work through that offering we make in the offering of our lives for the good of his kingdom, the kingdom of his mercy. We give thanks to God. Let us uh, sing together this doxology. Praise God, from whom all that blessings flow.
On this day, we will also offer opportunity. Please uh, know that we are invited to receive communion where you are uh, with the cup that you have. You may wish to avail yourself of the kneelers that are there to um, receive communion on your knees. You may wish to remain seated. If you might wish to come forward and receive communion at the rail, we give opportunity for that as well. We mark the spaces that we feel we need to keep, unless, of course, you uh, dwell together. But otherwise, observe those spaces and we'll make opportunity for those who wish to do that as well. Amen? Now let us join together in a great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is His right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. God of Abraham and Sarah. God of Miriam. Moses. God of Joshua and Deborah. God of Ruth and David. God of the priests and the prophets. God of Mary and Joseph. God of the apostles and the martyrs. God of our mothers and our fathers. God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and with all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highs. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highs. We remember Jesus, who in the night that he was betrayed and gave himself up for us, took bread and gave thanks to you and broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat, this is my body, this is me, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. And he offered the cup to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant. His blood, His life offered to us. Poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts, O Lord, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving to be a holy living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of body and blood of Christ. May they be for the and may we who partake of these be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion, Lord, on this day and every day with all of your saints, especially those whom we name before you now. Hear us as we pray to you. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, in your love, your mercy, your loving kindness. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ. Make us one with each other. Make us one in ministry to all the world. Make all the world one. So Christ comes in final victory and we all feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And then invite you to take the cup that is provided, opening the little bag. We'll take a moment now and an invitation any who may wish to come and receive the communion, uh, the share in the communion at one of the places marked before us at the altar rail or at the kneelers that are here. 
play a, just a little interlude of music, and if you wish to come forward, please do that now. Let's pray for one another and for each other as we prepare our hearts. time a young fellow in the church I was serving the following communion came up, came up to me afterwards and he said, uh, Red, now what? What? What what do I do now? Because he wanted to know I've taken communion, that seems to be very important. <laughs> what do I do now? I said to him, what can you do to share the love that you feel at this moment with somebody else. That was not what he wanted to hear. I think maybe he wanted a job in the church. I should have said, well, you can be on the trustees if you like. And that would be okay. But I think the answer has to do with whatever that love you feel. Share that with somebody else. It makes you sing. So let's sing together this song. Let's sing. Sing a song of the saints of God.
we need to live that life. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make God's face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord gift us with his blessings, love, peace, and joy. This day.